Yeah, good afternoon, um, Mid Canterbury, and welcome back to our little clip with Hamish. And um, Hamish, we had a council meeting today, went um, this afternoon, and we looked at um, how we can limit the rate rise going forward into next year. We also looked at uh, the number four instalment um, payment of the rates, and we come up with some decisions today, which we've handed over to you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what we decided today? Yeah, thanks, uh, Neil. That was uh, was a good debate, wasn't it? And um, councils uh, recognised that the, the proposed increase of rates at 4.8% uh, was a bit high, uh, given the um, situation in the community and the economic um, outlooks, etc. Uh, so after um, some extensive debate, council has um, asked um, the staff through me to limit the increase to 2.5% given us some indications of where we can make the savings, but um, essentially said to us uh, as um, the council will accept a 2.5% rate increase for next year and we need to go and make those savings. So that's our job starting um, next Tuesday to go away and, and get that into shape. Um, the other issue was in and around this next rates instalment, uh, which of course is going to go out uh, towards the end of uh, April. And um, we do need people to pay their rates, of course, that's what funds the services council provides. Um, but again, we're really conscious that if people are having some uh, financial difficulties, we don't want to be uh, too tough on the penalty uh, regime. So if people miss the um, due date for rates, uh, we would normally charge a 10% penalty. Um, but this time around, we, um, we still have to legally charge that, but we've got a really good um, set of tools that council's given us to be um, much more um, lenient, if you like, around how we might um, waive those penalties, particularly if, if ratepayers are committing to a, a program of payment, uh, then we'll, we'll be really bent over backwards to uh, make sure those penalties don't make it harder. Yeah, no, that, that's really good and um, that we can we can help the ratepayers out in the district. Uh, that's, that's our job, so it's good we're working in this together. But um, I see uh, cases of the virus are dropping down. So the two-week lockdown we've had so far is good. The numbers are dropping back. Um, we've got Easter coming up. And um, tomorrow the supermarkets are going to be closed. So um, those supermarket workers, the people who stuck, stack the shelves and, and check out operators or whatever, I think they deserve a good day off. So they're going to have that tomorrow. Yeah. They've been um, fantastic, haven't they? The, the people that have been working day in and day out and putting themselves, you know, in the way of um, of all of us who come out of our bubbles to shop, and uh, they, they they have to do that every day. They've been nothing short of wonderful, and I've been um, so impressed. You know, they've still managed to be polite and cheerful and helpful, and uh, have done wonderful work. And yeah, it's nice to see that they uh, they'll, they'll get a well earned day off tomorrow. That's for sure. Yeah, it's good. But we know that we can't forget that we've got to stay at home over this long weekend. Um, stay, look, do what we've normally been doing at staying at home, and we're good at it. But actually, I've got it on good authority. If people think they're going to get away to their batch or go camping or whatever, the police are out on the roads and they're going to be looking for people doing that. So I wouldn't advise them doing it because um, they may get there, but they may not get back, and they may have to spend two weeks wherever they get to and um, be stuck and you wouldn't want that so my best advice is stay at home and um, stay safe and save lives by doing it perfect thanks neil thanks we'll see you next week yeah cheerio